Greetings, fellow humans. Another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards, and I am Bad Mark. And today, we are Full Metal Keyboard. This is the Shaco Pro, Red Dragon's first fully aluminum keyboard. If I'm not mistaken, there are two models. I don't know which one came out first. But this is their first 65%, despite them saying 60. We can see the navigation cluster as well as the exploded arrow key cluster. Red Dragon did not tell me that this one was coming, just kind of surprised me with it. It arrived and I was very pleasantly surprised. I think Red Dragon has really been pushing the boundaries as to what can be done with off-the-shelf keyboards or in-stock keyboards, and I'm looking forward to this one. So this one is compatible with Chroma RGB, and it is a three-mode keyboard. Um, it also appears to have a wrist rest that all, that has an, an arm that sits in the back to either hold a phone and or a tablet screen. Um, it does have 2.4, but let's see if it has a pocket for it. I'm going to guess that it doesn't, but I hope it surprises me. It looks like it has uh, set screws in order to keep the uh, wrist rest there attached. But just to read over the features, 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth 3 mode, fully aluminum 60%, that's 65% mechanical. Keyboard with tablet and cell phone stand, as well as palm rest with side lighting. Sturdy aluminum frame, rest rest, as I've said before, hot swappable for more switch options. PBT keycap brings comfortable feeling. They look like shine through a PBT. 65% compact design to save more desk space. Compatible with PC, noted book and smartphone, USB-C, Bluetooth, and 2.4. I feel like they repeated a few things over, but we went ahead and went over it. Um, now this one doesn't seem to tell me what switches it includes. So I guess that will be a surprise for when we get in here. Let's go ahead and break the seal. A lot of their newer ones have been being built like this with a sleeve on the outside and a nice black box with the Red Dragon logo. So let's go ahead and see what we have in the box first. So in the box with the Shaco Pro, we see that we have a USB-C to USB-C cable with the elbow because the keyboard connector is on the side, as well as a USB-C to USB-A connector or adapter that's attached with a tail. We have, for some reason, a plastic keycap puller, which I would never suggest being used. And then we have the horseshoe switch puller. We also have uh, the stickers they include. We have the two bolts that are used to attach the palm rest or the wrist rest uh, to the keyboard and keep it attached. And then we have the smartphone slash um, tablet holder that attaches to the back somehow. We'll check that out in a minute. We also have a box with, I would guess, four spare switches. I'm not sure what switches we have in here yet. It doesn't say in the box. Oh, it looks like we just have your standard red, red dragon switches. Now, while these look like the standard Red Dragon switches, I'm actually used to them having a black bottom, and it's actually very minimal ping. Huh. That's got me curious. So, it looks like we have a fairly complete um, selection of items here. We're going to go ahead and just keep these parts out because I'm sure that we'll want to attach them to the keyboard and we'll go ahead and put the rest of this away. And here we are with the Red Dragon Shaco Pro and I, I gotta say I'm uh, I'm impressed. I have not seen a design like this especially for an off-the-shelf keyboard at such a um, low price but this is just 
I mean, alright, so we got ready for battle. That does seem to be embedded in there. Uh, we do, oh, we do have a pocket for the 2.4. Nice! Even though it's metallic, they still found a way to put it in there. It looks like it has a plastic shell below. But the lines on this keyboard are just, they're quite interesting. It does look like we have a cherry profile keycap set in. It really doesn't sound that bad. I mean, there is the slightest amount of ping, but it's not, it's not in your face and overly apparent. So basically we have an aluminum case and an aluminum plate. So this is a fully aluminum keyboard, but it looks like it has plastic down below. see what we got. The RGB are pretty decent. Uh, brighter than some of the other ones I've been taking a look at. And I gotta say, I like that floating keycap design. Now obviously this is not a gasket mount, this is a tray mount. Uh, or it might be a top mount, but I'm pretty pretty sure it's just a integrated tray mount. But wow this is um this is very interesting. It also has side RGB. I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess I, I with Red Dragon, I always found that I do best when I set my expectations. Not low, but just don't overly build them up. But this is just nice. So if we have a groove here that I can just use. It appears to just... Yeah, basically the wrist rest just slides in and then you use these to kind of just lock the studs that are in there in place. So it gives it a little bit of room being able to go up and down. I mean, I guess you could tighten it more. Yep. Uh, it's just there. It's a little bit low of an angle, but we do have a set of feet. That's actually not that bad. So we have a pocket for the, our USB dongle, and we have a switch for 2.4 Bluetooth and on. Uh, I like that the uh, rest rest also has matching pads on the bottom of it. I don't know about this foot, though, but. All right, so let's see how this attaches. It appears to be the same thing. There's a groove over here. We just stick it in the groove. And then we set the angle. I guess then at that point, just put... All right, not a biggest fan of the feet, but at least it has them. Most aluminums don't. All right, so I can obviously mess with the angles of this or put this up here. It is a nice little feature or if you're on the go because you've got your rest rest and if you're even just you're working off your phone I mean I don't know if you've used your phone with your keyboard but there especially if you're having to write out a big email or you have to participate in like say a video chat I don't know how many times having a wireless keyboard um, whether it had the stand or I just used one of my 3D printed stands. Um, any smartphone you have in your pocket now is more powerful than most computers built up until, what, 2005? Um, so you have a powerhouse, and especially if you have decks or something like it to where you can actually have your own desktop environment and you know connect it up to a monitor that's just sitting there, um, it, it can improve it even more so. But this is nice. This is what I would call, um, I forgot what Shaka was, but I would definitely call this the Road Warrior Beast because, I mean, yes, it's aluminum, it's nice and strong, but it's not like something so heavy that it's going to be like, oh, I wish I didn't have to lug this around. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the K641 Shaka Pro from Red Dragon. It is a 65%, 68 key, 3 mode, 
aluminum pre-built keyboard. It includes 2.4 GHz USB-C as well as Bluetooth 3 and 5 connectivity with three device slots. This also includes an attachable wrist rest as well as an attachable phone or tablet stand. It does come well dampened with silicone in the case as well as EVA foam between the plate and PCB. This keyboard weighs in at 1105 grams and MSRPs for $74.99 and also comes preloaded with Red Dragon red switches as well as Cherry Shine Through gradient keycaps. The chin of this keyboard sits at 16 millimeters while the back sits at 22 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Raising the one pair of included back feet, the back, you will raise the back to 31 millimeters with a typing angle of 8 degrees. So yeah, I gotta say, I mean, especially for the price, it's $74.99, but it's on sale right now. I, I've, I saw it as cheap as $59.99 uh, for an aluminum kit. Uh, it's got the Pro software, which means you have a little bit more functionality than you do on other Red Dragon keyboards. And they said that they're going to be improving software and software choices in the near future. Let's hope that remains that way. But I also wanted to give a look out here. Now, the stabilizers, unfortunately, they're the milky ones. If you guys know me, I'm not the biggest fan of the milky ones. And we can see how loose they are on here. But that's an easy fix with a piece of tape. Again, we have the Red Dragon red switches that they exhibit a lot less ping than the majority of them. They're still ping, and they could definitely use some lubrication. But being that it's hot swap, three and five pin hot swap compatible, you could also just put in your favorite switches in here. Now, just out of curiosity, I have yet to come across a Red Dragon with screw-in PCB support and or screw-in stabilizers board, and this won't be the first one. It looks like we can only use plate-mounted stabilizers on this aluminum integrated aluminum plate, but this is one that I definitely. Uh, intend to come back to. I think it sounds pretty good despite having uh, these stock red switches and um, these keycaps which I mean they're not horrible don't get me wrong they are PBT and they are shining through and they feel nice um, and the width on them is 1.3 millimeters uh, so they're not the thinnest but they could be um, well if I had it my way they'd be at least 1.5 millimeters but they do look nice they are cherry uh, they blend really well with the color of this keyboard and the shine through works I was able to connect this through Bluetooth connected almost immediately I saw a Bluetooth 5 and a Bluetooth 3 device select the 5 and it was connect connected immediately walked to another room and it was still typing everything that I typed in there so that's not a, a full-on test uh, but just a quick test to see that the wireless functionality is good enough um, if you're within the same room uh, the 2.4 was also basically immediate and the response seemed about as fast maybe a tad faster than Bluetooth but that could have just been um, a placebo effect I, I gotta say this is a for one of the like I said I'm not sure if this is their first because I do know that there's another one right now. I think they may have both been released the first time. So let's just say that this is Red Dragon's first 65% all aluminum keyboard. Now, granted, this is much thinner aluminum than you would find on a lot of the customs, uh, but it is still a decent and substantial keyboard that with a little bit of modding, I think is gonna sound much better, but doesn't sound half bad out of the box i am going to be coming back to this keyboard to modify it and see what's the best sound profile i can get out of this keyboard and see if there's any other little mods i might be able to apply to make it even better besides obviously making those stabilizers a bit tighter um, but otherwise i mean it doesn't sound awful it could sound better but it doesn't sound awful red dragon is in my opinion, moving in the right direction. I'd love to hear you guys' comments. What do you think about Red Dragon's boards and how they've been progressing, especially uh, 
over the last few months. I'd love to hear your opinions. And if you have any ideas of things that you'd like me to try when I come back to mod this uh, K641, please let me know down in the comments below. But for right now, I'm just going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the K641 from Red Dragon uh, with uh, Red Dragon Red uh, switches and this uh, double shot PBT gradient uh, blue set. Until the next transmission, folks, keep calm and keyboard on.